It is my intention in this video to demonstrate the basic fundamentals of the Russellian cubic wave field model, which describes the sacred geometrical construction of the electrical universe based on the sphere and the cube, the sole working forms of creation. The first image conveys the dynamic electrical motions within cubic wave fields and how they are transferred into their neighboring wave fields which fill the infinity of space. We live in a universe which is in reality two universes. The magnetic universe of universal mind which maintains absolute control over the electric universe of simulated mind ideas repeated in pulsing spiraling motions. Here we are looking at a magnetic cube from the creator's universe of magnetic stillness. This is space geometry which exists beyond human sensory perception. It is a geometry of absolute stillness and cold that exist omnipresently throughout the universe. These magnetic cubes control all motion in the electrical universe and give form to the spherical and gyroscopic ring systems we see populating the vastness of the infinity of space. The magnetic cubes of the creator's still magnetic light have six cathode faces of zero curvature and three interior cathode planes of zero curvature as well. These cathode planes are mirrors which both reflect electrically simulated light to its source point of still magnetic light at the cube's center and act as fulcrums to repeat the electrical motions into the surrounding cubic wave fields of space. The three interior cathode planes project electric wave motions to the surface cathode planes of cubes, where they are radar back and also projected into the neighboring wave fields only in their reverse condition. The four inert gas rings contain within them all nine inert gases of the spiral periodical table of the octave wave of elements. They are the foundations for all elements. These inert gas rings are two-dimensional planes which bound the dimensionless magnetic cathode plane of the nine cube faces. The inert gas rings as pictured here represent them in their cathode condition of maximum expansion being centered by the mother womb of cold, still space. This image titled Fusion by Walter Russell shows the inert gases in both cathode and anode conditions together. The reason being that there is an electric pulsing vortex motion back and forth between father anode and mother cathode, each becoming the other in balanced rhythmic interchange perpetually. Now imagine these inert gases as pictured in their expanded cathode conditions, bounding all six faces of the cube. You would see colored rings on all six faces. The same is true of the interior cathode plane of still magnetic light, and here we see them creating a sphere from the three mutually orthogonal sets of inert gas rings formed by the three interior cathode planes of zero curvature, which act as internal mirrors to project and reflect the male red and female blue electric spiraling lights of motion. It must be noted here that the nine cathode planes of the cube represent the static conditions of electric motions within a magnetic cube wave field of space because they are direct reflections of the electrical motions within the cube. The dynamic spiraling electric motions are seen in the eight diagonals of the cube as pictured here. This image gives us a view of how the electrical vortices move dynamically through all cube corners simultaneously into their neighboring wave fields. The sex divided father condition of the red color spectrum is seeking balance by mating with its opposite sex divided mother condition of the blue color spectrum of electrically simulated lights in its desire to return to the invisible white light of universal mind and magnetic stillness. The yellow corners are centers of atomic elements born on the vertices of these magnetic cubes. There, a fusion between the anodes and cathodes is created as they form cyclonic centers of atomic systems. Note also that Walter Russell is showing us the gyroscopic octave wave of the elements as they rise from the zero cathode planes of the still inert gases to collide at maximum compression at wave field amplitudes which are labeled plus four, zero, plus four. 
On the red male side of the color spectrum, the male dominates the female in its electrical charging condition to create a sphere, while on the blue female side of the color spectrum of simulated lights, the mother dominates the father and unwinds the sphere back into the inert gases of the next octave, while charging the spinning rings of elements to a higher position in the spiral periodical table. This image also shows how the sexless inert gases of the interior horizontal cathode plane, known as the south inertial plane in Russellian science, are dividing the invisible white light of magnetic stillness and universal mind into sexed conditions of male red and female blue electric lights, which are seeking each other as mates in opposite corner anodes. These electric vortices are called cathode waves by Russell because they begin at cathode planes of stillness and are charging centripetally inwards towards anodes of cyclonic fury and intense motions of maximum curvature and heat. Anode waves in opposition are discharging centrifugally from compressed anode conditions to cathode planes of expanded magnetic stillness, zero curvature, and absolute cold. The result of the cathode and anode waves interchanging from the six cathode faces of the cube, three interior cathode planes, and the eight corners of maximum compression, is the creation of compressed hot spherical bodies at the central anode of the cubic wave field. Notice the yellow anodes on the corner of the magnetic cubes are also centers of atomic systems which interpenetrate each other. This next image shows the division of mother blue spectrum lights and father red spectrum lights projected from four sexless rings of the invisible white light of the inert gases on the horizontal south inertial cathode plane of still magnetic light. The sphere in the center of the cube wave field is a central sun, and it is pulsing back and forth from the anode condition of maximum compression and heat to the cathode condition of maximum expansion and cold. We see here the illustration of this on one interior cathode plane of the cube. Now imagine this on all three planes of magnetic stillness simultaneously, and you can see how the sphere is the cube compressed into intense heat and maximum motion and the cube is the sphere expanded to the cathode cube planes of stillness and absolute cold in space. The inert gases are the seeds for each octave of elements as the spiraling electric vortices wind them up from their nebulous and unseen conditions of the undiscovered two pre-hydrogen octaves of the elements into the extremely dense conditions of the radioactive elements of the ninth octave. There are eight tones to the octave and the center sun anode one is two because it is balanced pair with father red on the left and the mother blue on the right hemisphere. The inert gases are the seeds for each octave of elements as the spiraling electric vortices wind them up from their nebulous and unseen conditions of the undiscovered two pre-hydrogen octaves of the elements into the extremely dense conditions of the radioactive elements of the ninth octave. There are eight tones to the octave, and the center sun anode is two, which are equally mated, because it is a balanced pair with father red on the left hemisphere and mother blue on the right hemisphere. Twin opposing electric vortices are projected from the inert gas planes of cold cathode magnetic stillness of the cube wave fields of space into their opposite sexual mates where they meet, creating spheres of intense heat with an equatorial plane of expansion and maximum radiation. The following image shows how the nebulous conditions of the gyroscopic rings of the elements near the cathode plane is compressed and expanded in each octave of so-called physical matter to create the conditions associated with each element. The sex-divided male condition is dominant in the upper three rings and the female sex divided condition is dominant on the lower three rings. The fourth position is a balanced pair where spherical bodies are formed. The carbon octave of the spiral periodical table begins with the inert gas seed helium as seen in this image. The elements of this octave are pictured as tones with carbon being the anode condition of maximum heat and compression. It is the perfect electric sphere and magnetic cube amongst all of the elements and has the highest melting point and greatest stability of all. 
The upper diagram shows the compression resulting in intense heat and the expanding condition of the electric vortices returning the heat to the omnipresent cold of space from which it was generated. This is the spiral periodical table created by Walter Russell to show how the elements are born from the stillness of space and inwound octave by octave from the inert seed gases to create all of the various conditions of electric motions which mankind calls the atomic elements. This chart is filled with information about the wave positions of the elements, the divided color spectrums of the sexed father and mother lights, the red and blue elements created by the imbalanced pairing of father and mother lights, their positions within each octave wave, and the isotopes created in the sixth through the ninth octaves. Walter Russell was able to predict many elements before they were discovered in academic laboratories, including deuterium, tritium, neptunium, and plutonium. Many of the elements shown in this table have still not been discovered by corporate scientists. There are two and a half octaves of matter which fill all of space, according to this table, which are unknown in academic circles because they exist beyond the range of human sensory perception and the machines mankind builds to sense them. Also, academia has founded its periodical table according to the foundations of the nuclear theory of the atom, which has been proved in great detail to have no relationship to reality whatsoever. This is the reason for the backwards chemistry and physics taught on this planet presently, and the resulting toxic concoctions created by corporate scientists which are polluting us and our world and causing wide-scale destruction of our health and environment. By learning the natural progression of this table, illuminated scientists of the future will be able to create products which do not destroy our world with toxicity and which do not cause toxic side effects to humans, animals, fishes, amphibians and reptiles, insects and plants, from the pharmaceutical drugs, pesticides, fertilizers, and chemical products used in industries, hospitals, farms, ranches, and households.